Okay, join my chairman, Danny Hunter. Thank you for taking the time to, to sit down and talk, uh, talk with us. So, now I guess there's only really one place to start with the, with the season. How, how have you um, taken the start of, of the campaign this year? Um, I'm disappointed. Um, but it's, um, it's about staying calm in these moments. It's about um, understanding what the club's about. Um, making sure, you know, the new people, and it's not just first team players, it's staff, it's interns, it's um, even supporters, it's people, making people understand what this club's built on, what its work ethic is, what its ethos is, um, and we're where we are for a reason, we're not good enough. Um, we haven't been good enough um, from day one. Um, Last time I think you interviewed me, I, I sort of, I intimated that um, I felt we might not be you know, where we needed to be after pre-season. Um, and we struggled, well, and we struggled most of the season. We're a third of the way through now, and um, we have to accept, you know, now's the time, you plant your feet, you come out swinging, and. Um, and you know, if if you don't want to get relegated, then you've got to be the last man standing. And um, you know, we need to change our philosophy a little bit, uh, get rid of some of this, the egos, and stop blaming the world and injuries for our plight. And um, once you do that, um, you know, we'll, we'll we'll start to look up instead of down. Yeah, we did have some issues with injuries at the start of the season. Do you feel that now that's coming to an end? That the club can always start looking up rather than worrying about what's below them? Yeah, um, but a lot of those were brought on by ourselves. I mean, you know, we can blame everyone for the injuries, but you sign a sick note, you know what you're getting. So, you know, I have to take responsibility for that. Um, so does Luke, you know, if they, you know, and Ch so does Charlie Under. Um, you know, at the end of the day, some of these um, people are put in front here. And you can say yes or no. So I can't be blaming everybody else. I have to look at myself. Um, but we just went away a little bit from the club that we'd built. And I think if you just look at some of the people that we let go, um, some wanted to go, um, some less so. Um, we did, our equipment wasn't good enough. Um, then, of course, we've had problems with... Um, Injuries. I mean, to lose Mo Sagath was a blow, um, and no one could foresee that. Um, to lose Jack Payne, of course, is a blow. He was our skipper. He'd come in to replace uh, Mark Ricketts um, in that role, and you know he's out from early July till recently, and you know he's got to find his feet again. Um, but we just haven't been good enough, and um, you know. Again, we need to find a way to get ourselves on the front foot. Uh, but like I always say, if you keep picking the same teams and the same formations and the results ain't going for you, then why do you expect different results? So Luke's aware of that. We've been through this many times. He's been my gaffer. You know, this is the ninth season. And, um, and again, you know, so, so you have to have unity, but you also have to be a realist. You have to be pragmatic. Um, and there's an edge to me, make no bones about that. There's an edge to me now because um, we won't get relegated. I mean, that's for sure. But we have to go and look, improve our squad, uh, move a few on. Um, and there's no emotion with me on that. You know, I want people who want to play for Bournemouth Football Club. I don't care where they've been. I don't care where they want to go. But if they don't want to be here, then um, they're no good to us. Because in the end, they're only thinking about their next deal. Um, or where they, you know, where where they uh, where they think they should be, um, and the truth of the matter is, if you're not in our our eleven now, um, you've got to look at, you know, you've got to look at it because if you're not in our eleven now with the way we're playing, um, you know, you ain't going to be in it after Christmas when we get when we get everybody back. Yeah, and in in terms of recruitment, I've heard you say that you don't want to rush into these things. You want to make sure. That players of the right fit. Is that, was that your message to, to Luke that you didn't want to rush into the market when you were going through that injury crisis? 
Well, it's it's not just that, is it? He's got to find the right players, or the right players have got to sort of make themselves available, and that's not easy in October. You know, I mean, you remember now National League clubs, they all think they're full time and they're full of nonsense, half of them. Um, you know, the scouting systems are not as they should be. You know, half of them have a quick look on Wikipedia um, and then think they know the player. That's not really, I mean, these players now are serious investments. So we have to look um, at, at, at where we are now. It's very, very difficult. It's not, you know, if you're going to start making sort of inroads in to, to your squad, you really got to be looking sort of after Christmas um, and, and putting that together for, for that sort of that, that April, May, June, July um, window, which can be um, can be lucrative. But as I say, you've got to do your you've got to do your work. You've got to um, you've got to understand how you want to play, um, and you know, and you've got to implement it. And we didn't quite do it. And it's it's again, it's not a science, which you, you know, as I say, no disrespect to half these managers or half these um, scouts and everything else, but it's not a science. You see it time and time again. Um, but we have an issue because we have to work within a budget and, a, and um, you know, and, and we're well over the budget uh, at the moment. Um, and, uh, yeah, so um, it's nothing I haven't faced before. It's nothing Luke hasn't faced before. It's not, uh, you know, this isn't, um, this isn't a time... Um, to get twitchy or get edgy. Now, this is the time for being calm and, um, and seeing things for what they are. And, um, you know, uh, if I'm honest, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not displeased with, um, with where we are behind the scenes at this point. I think we've identified things quite quickly and, uh, and I expect to see a reaction. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's really well. Yeah, and it's and it some more positive news off, off the pitch. If you look at some of the builds that have been completed this year, um, most recently Rico's. Are you quite proud of, of, of what you've built here? Yeah. Um, but that's been built off the back of success on the pitch as well. It's been, uh, that's been built because, you know, I've always had a vision for the, not just the football club, but for the town, for, for the community and, and for the academy. Um, there's been certain areas which have been neglected, um, but I don't think I've ever been more focused than I am now because I'm angry with certain things. Um, but that's okay. I'm, you know, I work better sometimes when um, when I, I need to to stick a rocket up one or two's backsides because they've been here a long time, a lot of them. And um, you know, I don't want an ego here. At the moment, you know, you, you, for the, you're too young to remember, but years ago you saw Wimbledon climb to the Premier League. Um, as soon as they forgot they were Wimbledon, they come tumbling back down the, um, uh, come tumbling back down the uh, the, the pyramid. Um, you know, and they're stacking, uh, they're stacking. Um, obviously, Div Two now. I know, obviously, I'm using them as an example and. You know, without getting into MK Dons and Wimbledon and rebirths and everything else, but they were, they were a good example. They were on the way down at that point, and because um, they forgot what made them a, that side, that Wimbledon spirit. And we mustn't forget we're an underdog club, um, and we need to, you know, and if we've got to go and leave something on somebody out there, or well, we've got to have that, you know, that focus and intent. To, um, uh, to go and scrap for points, um, then we've got to do that. And some of the people that have come here um, haven't, haven't quite learned that. Um, well, trust me, you know, they're either learning it really quickly or they won't be here. And it's that simple. Because um, we've got to bring better players in or players who are willing to go and, you know, run for 90 minutes, understand the message that Luke's given them and implement them. And, um, so I'm pleased with the build, yeah, of course I am. I mean, I spent two and a half million, you know, um, along with Arsenal, along with my partners at the council and at the town council. Um, and the place looks amazing. But, you know, um, I think we've done it to death now. I've built it, yes, great. Um, but that's no good when I'm sitting sixth from bottom. Do you know what I mean? And, um, 
no, we've got to be a focus to, to, to climb this league um, to make sure at the end of the day this town gets behind us. Um, and again, you know, which we've got the FA Cup coming, which gives us a, a, a couple of weeks break from the league. Um, and, uh, and so again, you know, as we know, the FA Cup's been kind to us over the last sort of three or four years. We move on now to, to the FA Cup. We've got a little break from the league. Um, obviously a competition that served us really well in the past. Are you, are you looking forward to, to getting back into FA Cup action and against um, a team that you would have known quite well, Welling United? Um, listen, the FA Cup's you know, the best competition in the world and it's been very kind to us. Um, I've loved the feelings with our supporters over the last sort of, you know, three years. No, um, I love bashing St Albans 4-0 live on telly because they were our local rivals. I mean, I love beating AFC Wimbledon here. Um, of course, we had the night in Bournemouth. We'd, um, we had the night up at Goodison. We beat Bristol Rovers away this time last year. And to be fair, uh, it was a hell of a game here last season, the one-all draw uh, with Ackerman, um in the, in the pouring rain and before we lost in a replay. So, millions of memories. The FA Cup, the first time we ever beat a league club, myself and Luke. I remember, you know, the conversations before the game, if it weren't going our way, how, you know, what he might do, etc. And we went one down against Blackpool and he brought on Blair Turgut and Danny, uh, Dan Holman and we won it 2-1. They got the goals, Luke was the hero and, um, and we've beat a lot of league sort of clubs since. So, um, yeah, it's a fantastic competition, and and it, and it can change the it can change the landscape of your club. You know, it can both on and off the pitch. Um, you know, so yeah, it's a magical competition, and hopefully, um, you know, we can we can get going against Welling on Saturday. You know, they they're going to be they're going to come here. They've got nothing to lose. They've already gone and beat Dartford in the Kent Derby in the FA Cup. So they know that feeling, they know that sense of belonging that they, they had that, that day with their supporters. Um, and uh, and Welling, have, Welling have always been a, a good club, they've got a great pedigree in the FA Cup. And um, yeah, so um, I'm expecting a tough game, but I don't care how we win it, I just hope we win it. Yeah, and you've, you've mentioned that uh, you may not be as happy as how, how the season has started, Timo. Where do you see it, the end of the season? and, and how do you view now the plan going ahead? The plan, the plan's in place. I mean, the club's never been more successful off the pitch than it, than it is now. Um, you know, we spent millions and millions on the infrastructure. We've got a fantastic academy. We build the club from the bottom up. Anybody tells you we build it from the top down, they shouldn't be here. We build it from the bottom up, you know. Again, you know, at the moment, you know, we've got to put the roof back on the house. It's blown off a little bit. Nothing more than that. The structures are in place. The budget's there. Um, we owe nobody any money. Um, we've got a squad that needs to deliver. We've got 20, a 20-man 20 squad. We've got a couple out till January. Um, a couple of short-term injuries. But we've got a 16-man very good squad. They've just got to deliver. So there's nothing that's not there, we've just got to tweak it. What we've got to do is, is make sure we've got the right type of characters who understand this type of football club. It's not a club that runs around, it's not, it's not a, a club full of egos, it's full of people who graft. We call it the ad factor, it's all about attitude, discipline and desire. And, and that, you can't use that as a soundbite. You've, you've got to make sure that, that that's how, how you see a footballing career or a career in football, because you can't just put it straight on the on, on the dressing room. You've got to look at the whole infrastructure. You've got to look at our medical department. You've got to look at our S and C department. You've got to look at our analysts. You've got to look at loose decision making. You've got to look at the goalkeeping coach. You've got to look at um, the assistant manager. But certainly, you've got to look at the chairman. You know, um, and again, in all departments, if we can all just improve you know, a smidge, then at the end of the day, it all adds up. And again, I've got no worries that we're going down. But again, you know, um, the club needs to be led. And, and at the end of the day, you know, I've led this club for 25 years. Um, 
and I've never thrown the towel in once. I'm not going to start worrying that we've had, you know, 30% of the season go by and it hasn't quite gone our way. But at the end of the day, I want everybody to know, you know, I'm not sitting here saying it's everything's rosy in the garden, because it's not. And again, sometimes, you know, sometimes, as I say, you, you need to be out of bear your teeth and you need to growl a little bit. And um, that's how I feel at the moment, you know, I'm not happy. Um, but again, I understand the reasons. And there's no point whinging about it. You've got, you've got to um, refocus, reset, and you go again. And again, it's those people who understand. You know, you go out on the cobbles, you know, you plant your feet and you come out swinging. And invariably, that'll get us through because we'll, do, we'll work smart, not stupid. And um, to do that, we need better players in key areas. But it's not a major thing. It's maybe two or three just in the right head, but we have to be patient, like I said before. And um, and this is a great club, mm. you know. Again, when I, you know, when we first went into the National League in 2015-16, you know, we were averaging three or four hundred, you know. People might say, oh, we're a tiny club, we've got no support, but we've been averaging over 1,100 now for a couple of years. We've got 900 season ticket holders. Um, you know, we've done initiatives for our over 70s, you know, they get free season tickets, although they won't, don't get that for the FA Cup. We've done so many things that have improved us, and, um, and there's a lot of people I need to thank, and I can't let them down by, you know, allowing us to drift into the conference there. Yeah, and then just on a, on a positive note, are you still confident in, in the personnel that you've got here, not, not just in terms of players and staff, but that everyone here is going in the right direction and, and is looking up? No. No. I mean, why would I say that? Um, of course I'm not confident in every person that's here and that we're going in the right direction, because the only direction we're going is down. Um, I'm confident in the leadership and in the key positions, but again, we need to make sure that we understand what leadership is. We've got to make sure at the end of the, end of the day, sound bites are easy. You live in a woke world, you know, everybody, you know, not being funny to yourself and everyone else, you get these people that come out of university. But trust me, you've got to get up early in the morning. You've got to work hard till late at night. If you want to improve, the only way to improve is to work hard. It's not, it's, it's not a magic formula, you know? Again, I don't go on Twitter. I don't go on fans forums or anything else. At the end of the day, most of the things that I comment on, it's what my eyes tell me. We haven't been good enough. So we're not going in the right direction. The club's going in the right direction. There's, an as there's one or two aspects of the club that aren't. Not just the first thing. There's one or two other things that can be improved. And there's some, some other things that have been outstanding. Like you say, you know, we've built a new ha um, fan zone bar. You know, but we've built a, a brand new kitchen within it. You know, we've added toilets and stuff like that around. We've built new entrance roads and CCTVs. We've built new compounds and um, we've built Wicko's Bar, we've built Oscars, we've built the Venga Suite, we, we've improved the first team changing room areas. We've done so much over the last few years, it's outstanding. But my focus is also about the south end of the ground. Um, uh, I want to put a new scoreboard in um, before uh, Christmas. But there's lots of things, I've got to discuss things with my partners at Arsenal with my partners at Hartsmere Borough Council, with my partners at Elstree and Bournemouth Town Council, my community, the people who live around it, we've got a future that, that everybody's invested in. So with the stakeholders, you know, again, as I say, to put us in the Conference South would undo 25 years of our work. So that's not an option. What is an option is to make sure Luke's supported, make sure that, that the staff here understand my work ethic and if they don't all they've got to do is get in their cars drive down the ramp and keep going you know there's nobody here that's more important um uh, than the football club so yeah so not quite the answer you're probably asking for because you put that question very nicely but we're going in the right direction if we're going in the right direction you know we'd be top six not bottom six and, and just finally, Danny, have you got a message to, to the Wood supporters coming into the FA Cup and, and also for the, for the back end of the season? Uh, yeah, get down this Saturday. Um, if you want to see us, you know, um, nick a win, then we're going to need you. Um, 
messaging, as I say, it's um, sometimes just got to be a realist to the supporters. I think the one thing supporters don't like is to feel that they're being lollipops. I don't think that they like it when you're trying to sugarcoat something, etc. They know what they're seeing. Um, but I need them to turn up on Saturday, support Luke in the right way, you know, and hopefully we'll go and get the result. You know, we go into the hat on Monday um, and then hope springs eternal. Each part of what we're trying to do only, only works if your community are behind you, if your supporters are behind you. So if the season tickets decide they're not turning up because it's not in their season ticket package, then we know we're probably going to be outnumbered by Welling. But as always, I always have faith in, in what we do. And uh, we'll come through this the stronger because of it. We'll come through it because we're honest. We'll come through it because we'll have the right attitude, the right discipline and the right desire. And that will be enough for us to do what we need to do now, um, next week um, and, um, and throughout the season. We know what we need to do, we just need to implement it.